Hello and welcome back to Moderation Wall Means for a Game. And we continue reading our video request week. We do a video each day based on your suggestions. And today we got another request to do another webcomic from Tepes. The same place we get Irma. And since again, we keep getting asked to do this without them actually choosing a specific comic, it is once again left to dealer's choice. So today we're looking at the webcomic The Dummy's Dummy by Mochamora. There once was a man, a very strange young man, who could build anything his heart desired. There was nothing he could not build, but everything he built was flawed. He did not know, and when at last he did, it was too late. Bot sold, bot sold, spread throughout the land. What was he to do? What could he do? Things built to entertain, tortured. Things built to protect, destroyed. Everything I make does the opposite of what I built it to do, and in terrible ways. It struck him then, he knew what he needed to create. If what he made became monsters, perhaps a monster he had to make. Yumi is an eight-year-old little girl, who wakes up one night to a very odd sound. She looks at the foot of her bed, and sees the teddy bear. It slowly makes her way closer to her, but she's too scared to move. As its mouth slowly opens, she thinks back to her grandpa, who always told her to ignore the scary things she sees, and they'll eventually just go away. She has a dream about him, telling her to check the basement. She wakes up that morning, and the bear is sitting right next to her, so she puts it in the closet. She meets her stepmom, Nora, who adopted her after her grandpa passed away. Her babysitter, Lily, was running a bit late, and asks if she'll be alright by herself, at least for a little while. She agrees, and then goes to the basement. But as soon as she does, she hears the closet door opening. She goes back to her room to check, and the bear is sitting on the bed. Play, play, play. It again turns nightmarish. Yumi runs and shuts herself in the basement. She thinks back to her grandpa, who helped her deal with the fact that she could see spirits. And she works up the courage to explore the basement, and finds a box with a weird aura. And inside, she finds a puppet, who springs to life and then also takes a larger form. Well now, so terribly sorry to give you a fright. So, who might you be? Uh, Yumi. Charm. Who? Oh. How rude of me. What is making that awful racket? Teddy. Living teddy bear. Teddy bear? Still, after so long? Still, I'm still having to clean up my idiot creator's messes? Him and his weird junk collection? The fool, because he couldn't take care of it? So of course he just dumps it on me? Makes me clean up your messes? It's fine. It's absolutely swell. Wait, don't open. Oh, shut up. Remember me, huh? It's been a while. Just as cuddly as before, I see. Ah, but... Now that our dear gentle creator isn't here with us... There's nothing to stop me from tearing you to shreds. I didn't get to introduce myself earlier, did I? My name is Paris. Paris the Puppet. I was created in the year 1932. 
to deal with the things my fool of creator created and could not control. Given everything that happened, I think she took it very well. Lily finally makes it over, only to find her passed out on the couch, next to the dummy. Chapter 2 involves Lily's sister, Iris, finding a pair of red shoes and picking them up for her sister's birthday. Nora is worried about Yumi, since she's been acting strangely after the event, but decides to give her some space. Seems like they've gone downstairs. I think now would be a good time to continue our chat. I'm sure you have some questions that need answered. I have some questions of my own as well. What, what are you? A living puppet. Um, well, how? I'm just teasing. I know that's not what you're really asking. Well now, about 80 years back, give or take a dozen, I may have lost track of time a bit in the box. There was an idiot who unfortunately discovered he had the ability to create absolutely anything he desired. In a way. Things he made to entertain terrified. Things made to comfort tortured. He could make anything, but everything that he would make did the opposite of what he built them to do. So he set out making a monster. Something made for destruction, made to rebel. Me. Monster. The opposite of... I see you catch on. The opposite of rebellion, absolute obedience. And I was given a very specific order to obey. Stop everything he had created. Except... Stop meant capture to him. Ridiculous. If he had just let me destroy them all from the very beginning, then our dear Teddy would never have gotten loose in the first place. And that's what's greatly concerned me at the moment. If Teddy and I ended up here, that means our dear idiot of creator might have somehow managed to lose track of us all. And that would mean I would have to clean up after that fool all over again. No rest for the wicked, I suppose. Speaking of which, last I recall, I had been thrown in that box by the fool once my job was done. But while I'm curious about how I ended up here, I'm more interested in how you knew to get me when our mutual friend the Teddy attacked. Perhaps you could illuminate me on both of these matters. Norma brought the bear from the antique shop that she ran, so it's possibly that's how he ended up here as well. She tried to explain how exactly she found him, but unable to find the words. Just saying is by accident. Not quite satisfied with the response, he accepted it and promised to leave in the morning. Aside from her grandfather, she couldn't really openly talk about the strange things that she sees. And that night, she had another dream about Lily, with the lifeless eyes, wearing a pair of red shoes, before the ribbons wrap around her, and a strange figure laughs behind her. She wakes up, unsure if it was real or not. She calls to Paris, pleading if he knew if the creator made a pair of red shoes. This is a callback to an old German folktale slash urban legend about a magic set of shoes that would dance until the wearer dies. They made a Korean horror movie about this, which we reviewed last year. I'll post in the insulate if you want to see it. Yumi and Paris show up, and then we learn two odd things. Paris was only commanded to stop the items, so he doesn't give a second thought about saving lives. And the other is that the blade he uses is actually its own entity, which has yet to be expanded upon. Finding the shoes too chaotic and unpredictable, he decides to just cut off her feet, but Yumi begs him, which causes the dummy to hesitate, as it kicks off his head. Yumi accidentally breaks her prayer beads, which cause her to slip, and Paris grabs the ribbon and cuts it off of her. He can move his parts independently, even if they're detached. They rush over to her, but Yumi slips on the beads as well, and he catches her. He puts himself back together, 
and Yumi tells them about the weird things that she sees. And the two agree to work together to stop the remaining items. Although, human emotion is still something he's not quite used to dealing with. And that was the first two chapters of Seven. The others deal with two more major storylines. And if you guys are interested, we'll revisit them in a future video. But for the time being, that about does it for this video. If you have any other ideas you'd like to get made to a video, then please post it down in the comments below, and we'll add it to our next viewer request week. It's now time for the part of the show, where we ask you to help us appease the YouTube algorithm by dropping a like, share, or comment. It helps out much more than you'd think. And if you haven't subscribed yet, then it's very much appreciated. And if you'd like to support this channel, then please visit our Patreon. Link will be down in the description below. Even if you can't give a lot, every little bit helps. And we got one more video to do this week. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. As always, I'm Runya. And I'm Ada. Remind you to take life in moderation. Weep not for children, for life is this way. Murdering beauty and passion. Hush now, dear children, it must be this way.